Prophecies of the first hour of the Wednesday Eve of the Holy Vassal. May its blessings be with us all. From Ezekiel the prophet, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. And the word of the Lord came to see me, saying, Son of man, say to her, You are a land that is not cleansed or rained on a day of indignation. The conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing, tearing the prey. They have devoured people. They have taken treasure and precious things. They have made many widows in her midst. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and unholy, nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths, so that I am... <coughs> so that I am profound among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves te tearing the prey, shed blood to destroy people and to get dishonest gain. Her prophets blasted them with untempered mortar, seeing false visions and divining lies. For them saying, Thus says the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken, the people of the land have used oppressions, committed robbery, and mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. Glory be to the Holy Spirit, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one of the men. From Ezekiel, the prophet, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. The, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of the man, the house of the Israel has become bronze to me. They, uh, they are all bronze, tin, iron, and lead in the midst of the furnace. They have become bronze for silver. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have all become bronze, therefore, behold, I will gather you in the midst of the Jerusalem. As, ga as men gather silver, bronze, iron, lead, and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow fire on it, to melt it, so I will gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Yes, I will gather you and blow on you with the fire of my wrath, and you shall be melted in its midst. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall be melted in its midst. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, have poured out your fury on you. Glory to the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The praise of the first hour of the eve of the Wednesday of the Holy Vesper. May its blessings be with us all. Amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art. those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Praise the Lord, Son of God. Alleluia, my son, God, let me go.
Salmos Toda
Psalms of our teacher David the prophet and king 
May his blessings be with us all. Amen. You have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. To you, O oh my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my defense. The God of my mercy, Alleluia. O oh Lord, have pity and mercy on us, and make us words to listen to your Holy Gospel. A chapter from the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the evangelist and pure disciple, may his blessing And Jesus entered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come again. He sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted calf are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious. And he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, into the go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Who, has, who, who do you who desire the day of the Lord? For what, you, what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness, not light. It will be as though as men fled from a, from a lion, and a bear met him. Or as though he went into the, the house, leaned his hand on the wall, and spurned bit him. It is not the day of the Lord's darkness, and not light. It's not very dark, but darkness is in it. In it. I hate, I desire. I desire your fast day, and I do not save your scarce assemblies, though you offer, offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings. I will not accept them, nor I will re regret for threatening peace offerings. Take Take away from me the, the noise of your songs, but I will not fear, not hear the melody of your string instruments. But let rejoice run down like water, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Do not offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years. O house of Israel, you also carried, carried a scrapful, your king and screen your idols, the star of the Lord which which you made for your souls. Therefore I will send you into the captivity beyond Amenachus, said the Lord, whose name is God of hosts. Praise the 
Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation and deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, power, and glory. <clears throat>
Que per tuo cotex e io te nimesti sacro so evangelio, che rion che tu antione mon, e che te sumen so per tuo cosumen, tu agio. From the Psalms of our teacher David, the prophet and king. May his blessings be all us all, amen. Blessed is the man whom you choose and cause to approach you, that he may dwell in your courts. Holy is your temple. Awesome in righteousness, Ali. pity and mercy on us, and make us worthy to listen to your Holy Gospel, a chapter from the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the evangelist and pure disciple, may his blessings be with us all, amen. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came, and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left, two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made rule over his household, to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, I mean the prophecies, the sixth hour of the Wednesday Eve of week of Holy Pascha, may its blessing be with us on a man. For thus says the Lord of hosts, 
the God of Israel, behold, I will cause you to the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride. And it shall be when you show the people all these words, and they say to you, Why has the Lord pronounced all these great disaster against us? Or what is what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? And then you shall all say to them, Because of because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord. They have walked after the other gods, and have served them and worshipped them. And they have forsaken me, and not kept my law. And you have done worse than your fathers. For behold, each one follows the dictates of his, only, his own evil heart, so that no one listens to me. Therefore I will cast you out of this of this land into a land that you do not know, neither you nor your fathers, and there you shall there you shall serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that it shall that it shall no more be said, the Lord lives. We brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of all ages. Amen. The doxology of the sixth hour of Wednesday Eve of the Holy Pascha. May its blessing be with us all. Amen.
Listen to your holy gospel, a chapter from the holy gospel according to Saint Matthew. The evangelist and pure disciple, may his blessings. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins are and trim their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answer saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who already went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. The prophecies of the ninth hour of the Wednesday Eve of the Holy Basque. May its blessings be with us all. Amen. Give them, O Lord, what will you give? Give them a miscarrying room and dry breasts. All their wickedness is in Gilgal, for there I hate them. Because of the evil of their deeds, I will drive them from my house. I will love them no more. All the princes are rebellious. Eraphim is stricken, their roots are dried up, they shall bear no fruit. Yes, were they to bear children, I would kill the darlings of their womb. My God will cast them away, because they did not obey him, and they shall be wanderers among the nations. Israel empties his vine, he shall bring forth fruit for himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he has increased the altars. According to the bounty of his land, they have now embellished his sacred pillars. Their heart is divided, now they are held guilty. He will break down their altars. He will ruin their sacred pillars. Glory be to the whole Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit.
Praise and honor, praise and honor, the prayer of the six hours may bless in Jesus. Hear us when we pray. Thank you, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Come, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, I am the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Ever to Cataxeon Tinemes, the Sacroasios to Agio Vangelio, Irion Keton Theonemon, Icatev so men so fea or theaco so men to Agio. Teacher David the prophet and king, may his blessings be on us all. Amen. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. pity and mercy on us and make us worthy to listen to your holy gospel a chapter from the holy gospel according to saint matthew the evangelist and pure disciple may his blessings be with us all amen woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites because you build the tombs of the prophet and adorn the monuments of the righteous and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you are witnesses amongst, against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Be loved, then, the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore I send you prophets, wise men and scribes, some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that you may come that on you may come the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. The prophecies of the 11th hour of the eve of the Wednesday of the Holy Pascha is blessings be with us all. Amin. From the wisdom of Solomon. From the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, the Prophet, may his blessings be with us, Amin. 
For wisdom is more mobile than any motion. Because of her pureness, she pervades and penetrates all things. For she is a breath of the power of God and a pure emanation of the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, nothing defiled gains entrance into her. For she is a reflection of eternal light, a spotless mirror of the working of God and an image of his goodness. Though she is but one, she can do all things. And while remaining in herself, she renews all things. In every generation, she passes into holy souls and makes them friends of God and prophets. For God loves nothing so much as the man who lives with wisdom. For she is more beautiful than the sun and excels every constellation of the stars. Compared with the light, she is found to be superior. For it is succeeded by the night, but against wisdom, evil does not prevail. Glory to be to the Holy Trinity, the Father and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Doxology of the 11th hour of the Wednesday Eve, the Holy Pascha is blessed with us. Amen. Hear us, my Lord, we pray thankfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, advance the kingdom, power and glory forever. Amen.
Pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, thine is the kingdom, power and glory.
शीश वो एनवांगलियों ने तो अब का तो एन आगे Psalms of our teacher David, the prophet and king, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. Have pity and mercy on us, and make us worthy to listen to your holy gospel. A chapter from the holy gospel according to Saint John the Evangelist, and your disciple. May his blessings. <laughs> and the pastor of the Jews was near. And many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they saw Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think that he will not come to the feast? Now that the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it that they might seize him.
commentary of the first hour of the Wednesday of the Holy Basra's blessing be with us all. Ameen. The king who made the marriage feast refers to God the Father, and his son refers to Jesus Christ the Saviour. The marriage feast refers to the world. The servant whom he sent refers to the forerunner prophets who preached to the Gentiles, saying that the Lord is coming. They did not listen, and each one went his way, one to his farm, the other to his business, and the rest caught his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king became angry, sent his army, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their city. Whom do you think the people were originally invited to the feast? None, none but the transgressed Jews. He sent again his servants, commanding them to go to the roads and invite everyone they can find, good and bad. The house was full of guests. Later the king came in to see the guests. He saw a man not wearing a wedding garment. He told him, Friend, how did you come here without a wedding garment? He was speechless, and the king ordered the servants to cast him away to the everlasting darkness. This was none but Judas and every one of us who will not be ready at the time of the feast. Judas and all those who are not ready will be cursed because they denied the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ our Saviour came and suffered for us, that he may save us through his suffering. Let us glorify and exalt his name according to his greatness. The third hour commentary of Wednesday Eve of the Holy Pascha. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. Think of our Lord's compassion, you worshippers of God, and think how he calls his chosen people who obey his will, wise and faithful servants. Blessed is the servant whom, when the Lord comes, finds him doing his will. His Lord shall reward him and make him ruler over all, good, over all his goods. But the Lord of that careless servant who neglects his commandments will come in an unexpected hour and find him not ready. He will cut him off and punish him where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let us be alert and ready and wait for the Lord's day. Let us rejoice with him and win his blessings and mercy. Christ our Saviour came and suffered for us, that he may save us through his sufferings. Let us glorify and exalt his name according to his greatness. Commentary of the sixth hour. O oh, for all these virtues which our Lord Jesus Christ, the peacemaker and the King of glory, grace, blessings, taught us through his parables. Listen and be aware and know his blessed parables. The parable of the wise bridesmaid is compared to his heavenly glory that is full of joy. Five were wise and five were foolish. All were virgins, but they differed in their deeds. He blessed the wise for their wisdom in filling their lamps with oil. But the foolish were lazy and did not trim their lamps. When the bridegroom came and they all went to meet him, the foolish ones could not join the bridegroom for their lamps went out. The wise bridesmaid joined the wedding and the foolish stood outside. Christ our Saviour came and suffered for us that he may save us through his suffering. Commentary of the ninth hour. All for these sad descriptions with which Jesus described the hypocrite Pharisees, those who killed the prophets and others who built the graves for them, those Pharisees, the serpents and vipers, who will not escape the punishment of hell, will pay every innocent blood they shed on earth, from the time of Abel to Zechariah, whom they killed between the altar and the sanctuary. All troubles and catastrophes will come on this generation, for they had one wicked counsel to kill the Son of God. Therefore God scattered them all over the world, and their enemies had dominion over them. Their inheritance were given to others, and their homes became desolate. Christ our Saviour came and suffered for us, that he may save us through his suffering. Commentary of the eleventh hour. It was the custom of the Jews as the Passover approaches that everyone goes to Ju Jerusalem to observe the feast. When they, when they did not find Jesus in the temple, they said to one another, Is he not coming to the feast? The chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees had evil, hypocritic thoughts, for they have sought how they might arrest him. Woe for this ignorance of those wicked people, for they had made a trap for the mighty Lord. Therefore, they will be chained and dragged to hell for their eternal punishment. Christ our Saviour came and suffered for us, that you may save us through his suffering. Let us glorify and exalt his name according to his great mercy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Tonight we were supposed to have His Grace Bishop Daniel with us, 
Um, so it should be he who's up here giving the sermon tonight. But unfortunately, no, it's not his grace. I thought he walked in at the last minute. <laughs> Uh, and um, he, his grace has gone to represent the Coptic community to visit a Sri Lankan community church. Uh, of course, we've all heard the horrible news of the violence that's happened in Sri Lanka over the last day or two. Uh, terribly sad. Uh, so his grace is there to offer the condolences and, and the prayers of all of the Coptic community. And he said that he will try to come. He said he'd try and be here by eight but it seems he's not, and apparently Abuna tells me that he said if he runs late, he may not get here at all. So in lieu of his grace, you're stuck with me tonight, you poor things. Um, the good news is I was supposed to talk on Thursday, but we'll get you a replacement on Thursday, so, so you don't get too much of a good thing. How about that? Um, so this morning, those of you who came nice and early this morning, you would have noticed that we started to pray a little bit extra in Thok Tetigol in the 11th hour, the last hour of this morning. And the reason is because at the end of the gospel, Jesus says, you know that after two days is the Passover and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. The Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. The crucifixion is a very important part of the salvation that Jesus came to bring to the whole world. And that's why we speak of salvation in this little extra phrase that we add to Thok Tetigom. Because you remember what the phrase is? What is it? We say, my Lord Jesus Christ, normally we'd stop, now we add, my good Saviour right? Saviour, the one who saves, is the one who brings salvation. So that's why we start to sing that, and we continue on for the rest of the week. And you'll have noticed that there is a theme in at least the first four Gospels that we read tonight, and the theme continues to be about salvation. You've probably noticed that often the last Gospel of one Bascha sets up the theme for the Gospels of the next one. And that's exactly what's happening here. Have you noticed that theme in the Gospels that we read today? We read them first as Gospels and then we recap them as commentaries. I'll just, third time lucky, I'll just quickly go through what they were about. The first one was about the marriage banquet, the man who sends out his servants to call the guests to the marriage banquet and they don't want to come. Okay, the second one, see if you can work out the theme, what is it telling us about salvation here? So I'll give you a little hint. So some of them don't come, but some of them do come. And then in the third hour, we have some speaking about, Jesus speaking about his second coming, in which he will judge the whole world. And he describes Noah. He uses Noah as an example. And he says there were some people who got on the boat with Noah, and there were some people who didn't. Are you seeing a theme developing here? Okay, in the third gospel, the sixth hour gospel, it's the story of the ten virgins. The bridegroom comes, five virgins have their oil filled, their lamps filled with oil, and they go in with the bridegroom. Five of them don't. Are you getting the theme yet? Surely you've got it by now. And in the fourth one, which is the gospel of the ninth hour, we have the hypocrisy of the scribes and the Pharisees who build the tombs of the prophets and, you know, and say, you know, we are good people and so on. And he says to them um, that all kinds of horrible things will come upon them and they're very guilty. So again, we have the people who are not with Christ. And of course, in the psalm at least, we have deliver me from the sword and so on. These are the people who are with Christ. So I think you know the theme that I'm trying to point out very obviously, don't you? The theme is when you meet with Christ, certainly at the end of the world, but even now when each of us meets with Christ, you will be one of two kinds of people. You will either be the one who loves him and runs to him, or you will be the one who rejects him and turns away from him. 
And all the four Gospels are developing this idea. What does it mean to love Jesus? What does it mean to be saved by Jesus? Because salvation is the theme, remember? So what does it mean to be saved by Jesus? And we come to the last hour, and we have a beautiful description of this salvation. This is just such a beautiful thing. You know that Jesus has many names. He's described by many names. One of them is wisdom. And it's kind of weird, because in the Old Testament, in Hebrew, or in the Greek translation, wisdom is a feminine uh, noun. But we don't worry about that kind of stuff, right? Wisdom is Jesus. Jesus is wisdom. Because as, as divine God, he's beyond uh, gender. He just happened to be a man when he came to the earth, because he kind of had to be one or the other. Um, so wisdom is Jesus. So I'm going to just reread a little bit of this lovely passage from the Wisdom of Solomon. And every time I say wisdom, think of Jesus. Okay, think that this is speaking about Jesus. For she is a breath of the power of God, a pure emanation from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, nothing defiled gains entrance into her, for she is a reflection of eternal light. Isn't that exactly Jesus? He's the reflection of the light of God, a spotless mirror of the working of God and an image of his goodness. When Jesus became flesh, he became what human beings were always meant to be, the perfect image of God. Though she is but one, she can do all things, and while remaining in herself, she renews all things. Jesus is the one who came to renew the fallen and broken world to renew fallen and broken lives and hearts. In every generation, she passes into holy souls and makes them friends of God. That's what we do when we have communion. Jesus passes into our bodies, he passes into our souls, and he makes us the friend of God. Do you know where else we get this beautiful picture of the salvation of Christ and what the person who is saved, the person who is like the five wise virgins, what that person looks like. You know where we get that? We get it every time we sing Thok Teti Gom Nempi O. Please allow me to take you through a very brief journey through this hymn. Because we sing it, has anyone ever worked out how many times we sing it during Passion Week? No, for the whole of Passion Week. We say it 12 times each Pascha. Do you know? How? 636 times. Goodness me, someone's done their homework. That's, that's a lot of Thok Teti Gorms. And when you repeat something over and over, sometimes you kind of, it just, uh, you know, I like the tune, but particularly when you're singing it in Coptic, because most of us aren't fluent in Coptic. I don't think any of us are fluent in Coptic, really. So let me take you through a journey with Thok Teti Gom that captures this beautiful salvation of Christ and the life of the one who is saved in Christ and who becomes one with Christ, in whom Christ flows and renews him or her through the hymn of Thok Teti Gom. So what I want you to do for the rest of this talk Please do not look at me. Everybody turn away. I want you to look up there. I want you to look at Christ. Okay, it's a matter. You're looking at me. Don't look at me. Look at Christ. Okay? Because we are singing to Christ. Salvation in the Christian understanding is not just some theoretical idea. It's not just some concepts we hold in our minds. It's a living relationship. And a relationship has to have two partners. So when we're singing Thok Teti Gom, that's why we have Jesus up there very, very prominently. So we can look at him. And through this praise and singing that we sing, we 
unite, we become closer to him and he becomes closer to us. You know, of course, this is the hymn that's taken from the book of Revelation. It's what the angels and the saints sing in heaven. And we here on earth, we bring that hymn down so that it can lift us up to be one with Christ in heaven. And you'll notice on Good Friday that that's exactly what we do in the last hour of Good Friday. When we sing Thok Tetigom, do you remember how we sing it? In a very s different way. Normally we sing the north side and then the south side, the north side and then the south side. But for the very last hour of Good Friday, we have people in the sanctuary and we have other people out here. And that's the alternation, heaven and earth, heaven and earth. Because through the death of Christ on the cross, through his entering into our hearts, he brings together heaven and earth. Okay, how are we going to understand this? What does gom mean? See, by the end of tonight, I want you, as soon as I say each of those four descriptions, you'll immediately say the English word, right? We want to connect the Coptic to the English. Because otherwise you're saying it and you're not really thinking about what you're saying. Okay, so what does gom mean? Power. Actually, if, uh, if we can trouble Ahmed, if we can get Thok Teti Gorm up, we're going to totally destroy his order and he's going to have trouble finding it again when we finish. But he's a kind man and hopefully he'll forgive me. Okay. Thok Teti Gorm. Okay. Thok means yours. Okay. You're addressing someone. You're speaking to someone. You're pointing to someone and saying yours. Te is is. And then T is the, it's the feminine one, gom. So gom means, what does gom mean? Okay, what does P-U-U mean? So P is the, it's the masculine the. U-U means, what does gom mean? Ah, someone said glory. What does gom mean? What does U-U mean? Okay, we're doing well. Esmo means praise, okay? It literally means to say a good thing about someone. So sometimes it's translated blessing, right? Because when you bless someone, you say something nice about them. So what does esmo mean? What does uu mean? What does gom mean? What does uu mean? Very good, okay, we're getting there. And the last one is amahi, which means honor to honor, to respect, to look up to. So what does amahi mean? Honor. What does uu mean? Oh, very good. Gom? Amahi? What was amahi? Uh, esmo? Okay, now I want you to look at Jesus, okay? Imagine the heavenly hosts are saying these words to Jesus. To you, Jesus, sitting on the powerful throne of heaven. Don't look at me, look at Jesus. Okay. To you, Lord, is the gom, which means to you, Lord, the Lord of heaven and earth, to you is u'u, which is to you, O Lord, is esmo. To you, O Lord, is Amahi. Okay, you can imagine why you would say that if you were in heaven, right? And then we say, Emmanuel, our God and our King. The first one, the first Thokteteigo, you can think of, and there are many different ways to think about it, but this is just one. Think of it as the heavenly praise. Why? Because we call Jesus God with us. God, El, is at the end of Emmanuel, right? That is the divine name of God. So the first one is about the divinity of Jesus. We're thinking about how Jesus is divine. He is God. And then we say the second one in which we call him Jesus Christ, my Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus was his human name. So you can think of the second Thorpe Tetigorm as praising the human Jesus. Making sense so far? So now I want you to look at Jesus 
And rather than thinking of the divine King of Heaven, now think of the humble man Jesus. With a body like ours, with hunger like ours, and tiredness like ours, who came and lived among us. And now we're going to say the same thing to him, thinking of him as now the one who shared our nature, Jesus. To you is the gom, which is? And the esmo, which is? What is it? Okay, I'm mixing it up, right, to make sure you're connecting the words. To you is amahi, which is? To you is uu, which is? Okay? Are you connecting with Jesus a little bit? Are you thinking about him? Are you really saying these words to him? So, the first one was to Jesus in his divinity. The second one is to Jesus in his humanity. And when the two come together in Jesus, when God becomes man, salvation occurs. And that's why this morning we added, my good Saviour. And in the third Thorkteti Gorm, we are now not just thinking of Jesus the Divine, we are not just thinking of Jesus the Human, because his divinity parted not from his humanity, not for a single moment or a twinkling of an eye. In the third one, we are now thinking of the incarnate God, the God who is man. We're bringing the divinity and the humanity together. And that's why when the God who is man dies on the cross on Good Friday, we add the third addition in which we say, my strength and my praise is God who became my holy salvation. My strength, what's that in Coptic? My God, Tagom. Okay, and my praise or blessing, what's that in Coptic? Esmo, didn't we say those words before? How come we're now saying them about us before we're saying them to Jesus? Why are we saying them about us? Because when Jesus, when God becomes man, he unites us, weak human beings, to himself. And that's what salvation is. For us to be united with God, for us to be one with Jesus, for him to live in us, and for us to live in him. So now we're taking the things that we said to him, and we are realizing that because now I am in him and he is in me, he has become for me those same things. He is my strength, which is? Which word? And he is my blessing or praise, which is? And what's uu? And what's honor? And what's blessing? And what's glory? Ooh, ooh, okay. We're gonna, someone's, I said, what's glory? And someone said, glory. <laughs> Which is technically correct. So we finish with this beautiful, lovely final crescendo in the hymn, which lifts us up into heaven with the hymn of the angels. And why are we lifted up into heaven? Because through Jesus, who is God, who became man, he united us with himself, and therefore, because he is the king of heaven that we started off thinking about and praying to, he has taken us with him up into heaven. And that's where we get to at the end of Good Friday, and that's why we have some people in there, but some people still out here, because it's not all finished yet. And then finally, on the Feast of the Resurrection, we open the curtains, because now heaven's doors are open to us through this process. Isn't this a beautiful hymn? Can you see how wonderful it is? When we sing it, we're not going to sing it, we finish for tonight, but in, we still have lots of baskets to come. I'm sure we've got something like 400 left. So we have still many, many opportunities to think about this beautiful journey that we are taking through Passion Week, which is encapsulated, summarized, captured, in this very simple hymn. To you is the gom. What are you thinking of? 
and the uu and the ismo and the amahi because you are divine emmanuel god with us and because you are human jesus my lord and because in yourself you brought heaven and earth together and you will bring me together with you so that i can be a part of heaven this is what salvation looks like and glory be to god forevermore amen hallelujah be christos be en sotir So that through his passion, he may save us. We glorify. and pray to you lord god the father almighty and the only begotten son creator and benefactor of all holy spirit the life give before him kneels down every creature in heaven and on earth we ask your lord to hear us and have mercy upon us for the sake of the perfect peace and the unity of all the church in the world the monasteries and all the holy places and their dwellers and keepers O oh God, have pity on your creation and save us from all evil. We ask your Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. You prepared for us the for life of man before his creation and made all things with your wisdom and embellished the sky with the stars and the earth with the vegetation, trees and vineyards and the valleys with the shrubs. With the shrubs and roses, you know, our King, accept unto you the prayers of your servants standing between your holy hands, saying, We ask your Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. O oh, great and holy God, who created man according to your image and your likeness, and gave him a life and reasoning soul, have mercy, O Lord, in your creation which you have created, and have compassion on us and bestow upon us your mercy from the loftiness of your holiness in many mansions. We ask your Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. You who saved your servant, the righteous Noah, from the deluge, and his children and their wives, and also the animals, clean and unclean, in order to renew the earth once more, we ask our Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. You are the Creator. The benefactor of all, save your people from the deluge of the sea and of the world. Preserve them and all the animals from harm. As, as for the birds, give them their food as due, and give the cattle pasture and feed the baby crows. We ask your Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. You who received as guest by your servant Abraham, father of the fathers, and sat at his table, and blessed his offspring. You now, our King, accept the prayers of your servants and priests standing between your holy hands and have mercy on the world and save your people from hardship and dwell in them and accompany them. We ask our Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. We ask our Lord to guard us from all evil. Have pity on your creation, all your people, because all people look unto you and you give them their food in due time. You are the feeder of everybody. The help of the helpers, the hope of the hopeless, we ask our Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. 
You who looks to the humble with ever attentive eye of your concern, saved Joseph from his master's wife, and made him king of Egypt and his affairs, and let him pass safely through days of tribulation, that his brethren and his father came to him, kneeled before him, took from him wheat, food for their children and their cattle. Likewise, we too, we bow down before you and kneel unto you, before your holy hand, and thank you, o our Creator and Benefactor, for this condition, on in every condition and for all conditions. We pray that you save us from all hardship. We ask your Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. Yeah. O Lord, the Word of God, the Father, the Giver of the Law, the Prophets and the Old Testament, you are the perfection of them all. Save your people from tribulation. Arrange their life according to your good will. Save us from famines and calamities. We ask our Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. You who supported the people of Israel for 40 years in the desert of Sinai, when they had no house or store, you now, my Lord, protect your people. Support them and bless their homes and their stores with your heavenly blessing. We ask our Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. You who accept the prayer of the Elijah to the Shabbat, when the sky rained and the earth gave fruit, and bless the barrel of meal and the curse of oil in the house of the widow, accept the prayers of your people through the intercession of your holy saints and the prophets. We ask our Lord, hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. God, have compassion and pity on the world, and bless their crops and stores and the little that they have. Raise the waters of the rivers according to their measures, and give good temper to the winds. Bless the Nile of Egypt this year and every year, and fill the face of the earth with joy, and sustain us, we your people. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. You who accepted the repentance of the people of Nineveh when they all fasted and accepted the confession of the right thief on the cross, we likewise make us worthy of your acceptance and compassion in order to cry unto you, saying, Remember us, O Lord, when you come in your glory. Accept the repentance of your servants, their confession, their fasting, their prayers, and offerings which are offered on your holy altars as a good incense, and have mercy on them. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. You're the powerful provider, the one who disciplines, the healer, the physician of souls and bodies, who examined his servant Job and healed him from his calamity and recompensed him with more than he had. Have mercy on your people and save them from all calamities, tribulations and miseries. O oh, you, the supporter of those who trust in you, we ask you, O oh Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. O oh, you, Christ our God, the word of the Father who made a covenant with his holy disciples, and washed their feet and made, us, made them leaders of believers, and guiding lights of religion and satisfaction for hungry souls, and taught them prayer, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. O oh, you, the wonder worker who fed thousands from the five loaves and raised the dead and blessed the wedding at Cana of Galilee, now you, O Lord, bless the bread, the oil, the fruits, the honey, the stores, the trades, and the affairs of your servants. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. Kyrie eleison. O Lord, save your people and protect them from all sides with the life-giving sign of your cross. 
raise the lot of Christians in all the world and soften the hearts of their rulers towards them and their hearts with charity towards the poor and needy brethren and deliver them from all evil. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, who left for us the holy covenant of his body and blood every day on the altar as bread and wine, transformed by your Holy Spirit, and commanded us, saying, Do this in remembrance of me. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. O Christ our God, have mercy on your people and the descendants of your apostles. Give blessing to the fruit of all the earth and make happy the heart of man by multiplying the fruits of wheat, vines, and oil. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. O you who are begotten from the Father and was incarnate from the blameless Virgin Saint Mary in the fullness of time, who said unto his holy apostles, Go and preach to all the nations and baptize them and teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Be also with your people who cry unto you, saying, We ask you, O Lord, to Hear us and have mercy upon us. You, the forgiver of sins and the giver of good things, forgive the sins of your people and cleanse them from all uncleanliness and wash them from all deceit and keep them from bearing false witness and all envy and slander. Take away from their hearts evil thoughts and unbelief, and pride, and callousness. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us, and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. O Virgin Mother of God, you are the fence of our salvation, and the impregnable fortress. Bring to naught the counsels of the adversaries, and turn the afflictions of servants into joy. Defend our city and fight for the Orthodox kings and rulers and pray for the peace of the world and churches. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. You, the God of mercy and the Lord of consolation, do not be displeased with us nor rebuke us for our evil deeds or the multitude of our sins. Do not be angry with us, nor let your anger last for ever. Hearken, O you, the God of Jacob, and look, O you, the God of our succor. Protect the world from death, scarcity, pestilence, earthquakes, horror, and causes of fear. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. For the sake of our protection under your holy and lofty hands, O God, we ask you to keep for us the life of his holiness, our Pope Abbot Oadris II, and his partner in the apostolic liturgy, Amber Daniel, Institute him in his sea for many quiet and peaceful years. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. O Christ our Lord, we ask of your goodness and your great mercy to keep for us the lives of our fathers, the metropolitans, the bishops, and all the clergy and the laity. Multiply the dignity of the clergy, give purity to the deacons, strength to the elders, understanding to the young, 
chastity to the virgins, ascetism to the monks and nuns, virtue for those in wedlock and protection for women. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. Also raise the fallen, return the travelers safely to their homes, support the widows and the orphans, and give plenty to those in poverty. Those who are in debt, pay their debts for them and forgive them. And those who are in distress, give them comfort, heal the sick, and repose the departed. We ask you, O Lord, to hear us and have mercy upon us. God of our fathers, saints, do not forsake us or neglect those whom you created by you with your holy hands. Are you the merciful who revealed his love to mankind? Accept from your mother intercession on our behalf and save us. You, the savior of, her, the, savior of the humble, do not forget us forever or renounce us unto the end. For seek of your holy name, and your beloved Abraham, and your servant Isaac, and your saint Jacob, do not break your covenant with us and deprive us from your mercy. We ask the Lord to hear us and mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. Hypnoti nainan se shonairon. Ario naine man gentek meto oro. Kiria nai son, kiria nai son, kiria nai son. Kiria Kiria lai son, kiria lai son, kiria lai son.
Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. We proclaim and say, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was crucified on the cross, Christ Satan under us. Save us and have mercy upon us. O Kitchi, it heres and moises team at O Eben Temel, she said, the team at Hello, they are Cumben Ogana and Temaso, Sala, Becatias, Bentel, Sophia, and Teso, Lama, Bebne, Mamba, Clayton, Yajen, Abus, Tolo, Sem Shaisa, De Are, Von Kneme, Tahu, Erat, Jesus Christ, our true God, who accepted the passion willingly and was crucified on the cross on our behalf, may he bless us with all the spiritual blessings, help us and complete for us the Holy Vascha. Show us the happiness of his holy resurrection for many years to come through the never-ending intercession of the blameless Holy Seat, Holy Lady, the Theotoko San Mary, and all the choir of the angel and archangels, through the prayer of the patriarch, the prophet, the apostles, the martyrs, the judge, and the righteous people, and the cross-bearer, and the ascetists, and the confessors, and all the ash for the ash choir, and uh, through the blessing of the Holy Vascha, of our good Savior, May their holy blessings, their grace, their power, their gift, their love, and their help be with us all forever. I mean, Bechrisos Ben Noti. Jesus Christ, the King of Peace, grant your peace. Forgive us our sins. All pray together, our Father who art in heaven. Hallelujah. Give us the day. I would like to apologize for coming late. This is because I just came from the vigil prayer of the Sri Lankan Christian people in the Uniting Church now as a number of the victims reach 310 so the Sri Lankan Australian people conducted a vigil prayer in the United Church in Blacktown and I went with a delegation from the Coptic Church so tonight I'm sorry I miss the bus how is you but hopefully if God permit us and give us um, 
another chance we will have the, the Pascha with you next year. I would love to give you a sermon, but it's too late now because this is happening in the world. The Christian had been killed in Nigeria, in India, and in Sri Lanka. Uh, I'm saying Christians are subjected to persecution in India, in Nigeria, in Sri Lanka, and everywhere in the place. So please, I'm urging you, and I'm asking you for two things, <clears throat> Puna Antonius, two things I need you to do with the Reverend Father or the priest of the Diocese of Sydney. Number one, please pray for the victims, the Lord may for them, and their families, so that the Lord can comfort their families, their relatives, their friends, and their country. And also in Friday, we need our love to be practical love, because there are 500 people injured, in addition to the 310 who have been killed. 500 now in have been injured and I think this country is very poor country and they need help so I'm, I'm thinking that the blessings of the Diocese of Sydney which are going to collect this Friday is going to be uh, distributed in three portions one for Sri Lanka I'm going to give it to the Sri Lankan ambassador the number two Sudan is passing through difficult time uh, we don't know the reality yet, but I think we need to give portion, the second portion for Sudan and the third portion for Egypt. So please try to be uh, good Christians and express your love in a practical way so that we can express our love to these people. I wish you uh, all the happiness and uh, blessings of the resurrection of Christ. and. Please pray for Christians all over the world. And please accept my apology for being coming late. Thank you very much. I bless you all. So please go in peace. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Guys, just a reminder. Sorry. Um, during, during the Psalms when they're being read, there are... During the Psalms when they're being read, it's a very, very beautiful opportunity to read something spiritual. Read something spiritual. So that's why the bookshop is open. There are lots and lots of books in there. Um, you're most welcome to go and finish them. Buy what you can. Um,